I'm so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am because I have the world of respect for you. Aww. Anele, you have blown me away because we go way back. Obviously, back to the university radio days. Um, we had some good times. Dude, we had the best times. And I'm so glad we came up in that era. I, and, I, and I think that's why if you look at um, everybody who was there when we were there and their longevity in whatever career they chose, uh, they chose after that, I think it, a, a lot of that points right back to that time. Absolutely. We were rock and roll, man. I don't, I don't even think they realized the talent they had at that ah. time because I mean you you're a rock star that's like um, you you're a queen bee you <laughs> are you. queen bee of South African broadcasting right now there's no doubt and anyone who wants to dispute that I think they need to check their facts <laughs> they're going to have a long day ahead of them <laughs> did did you think those days at Tux I mean we just had fun yeah did you dream of this I mean you're a power player dude I mean you within a phone call you can get the president right yes yes like literally of which country Exactly <laughs> right. You see. Oh my goodness, we're in royalty. I need to bow down <laughs> respect. But that, but that is the mm. level you're operating at now. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I uh, yes. People are certain calls Cheers, away from me. Honestly, yes, yes, yeah. People an incredible are certain career, many Thank more. You. I think back at Tugs, um I, I I felt that it was a it, it was a it was a heyday there. Yeah. Much like I can tell you that at 5 a.m. when it was Gareth on breakfast, Sasha, uh, myself and Grant, Fresh, Kula, and I can power. tell you, in, in that, yeah. I knew we were in the heydays. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can always tell the heydays of something. Like, with 947 now, I can tell you now, like, with our lineup and what we're doing, we're in the heydays. And at Tux, I felt it, and that's why I was always there. That's how I was a sponge. That's because, mm. remember, I was junior to you guys, yeah. but I did hang out with you guys a lot. No, there was a lot of tequila. Yeah, exactly. There was a lot of tequila. Track. So it was a party for me, but I was just sponging. I yeah. was just like wanting to know because it was so strange that I, I knew so little about radio until I got to Tax FM. I, I knew so little. You, you think you know. How did you get to Tax FM? Because I, my, I've told my story and people are bored and people <laughs> throw stuff at me when I tell, you know, but how did you get to Tux? Did you do the audition thing? I did the same audition where you're going to the boardroom yeah. and then Rian is there Rian with Tim and, and Simon and, and, all those and the other guy, the, 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 the technical guy. Creepy guy. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, Sorry, creepy guy. He's like very dreamy in his <laughs> eyes. Absolutely. And yeah, so you sat there and they interviewed you and you had to be interesting. You had 10 minutes to be interesting, yeah. especially if you wanted to be an on-air personality. Yeah. And Rian van Nieren doesn't suffer boring. If you're boring, he will throw something at you and yeah. then throw you at something else. Absolutely. You know? So in 10 minutes, um, it, it was it was amazing. And then they said, we're going on camp on, on Friday. I, I think I remember my, my interview must have been Monday. And then they said, on Friday, we're going on camp. Because my interview, I was told I was too boring to be a DJ, right? Oh. And then I got a phone call from Fissy saying, but I know you like sport. So how about you come and do sport? So I was like, yeah, sure. He says, your show's on Friday. And that was the Wednesday. So I got thrown into the deep end. It's the best thing that ever happened to me because oh I learned from the ground up with Simon Frost yes. on the other side. He was pushing the buttons and I was thrown in the deep end. And it was the best thing that could ever happen. So I'm eternally grateful for that opportunity. But your trajectory has gone, oh, my goodness. It's like out of the stratosphere. <laughs> so, I mean, these days... You're rocking the breakfast show. The, probably one of the most popular in the country at yes. the moment. You've got a dynamic team. You guys are oh, sounding they're great. Amazing. You're obsessed with cheesecake. I'm not sure why. At the moment, we're, we're on a cheesecake search. And, <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit lactose intolerant. So <laughs> I, I have like these pills in my bag, lactase. Yeah. Let, me, let me find them for you. So Quick endorsement. This is our sponsor, lactase. Oh, really? No, it's no, not. I'm no, they didn't, oh, I was, I was <laughs> like, they didn't pay anything. They're not getting anything. <laughs> but it's so funny because Cindy, actually, Cindy's husband told me about these. Because okay. I would, I would just suffer. Like I would just, because I'm not, I'm not gonna has stop it, eating have cheese. You, no, of course not. But have you? Is it something you've battled with for ma many years? No, I, I, for many years I've had tummy issues. Mm. But I'd always think, oh, I'm hungry, or oh, I ate this, or that must have been bad. Sure. And then, and also the, the life you live, you're always eating something. Do you know somewhere. what I'm saying? You yeah, some, yeah, you yeah. somewhere. So then, and then I had my gallbladder out, almost died. Long story. We, how okay? long is this podcast? You're okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. Thank God. Yeah. And then they said to me, "Oh no, you don't handle dairy well, so just be careful." So I'm not like full blown, but now you're tasting cheese for five days a week. Yes. 
and you're a girl from the Eastern Cape with proud roots in the Eastern Meat. Cape. Yes. Meat, <laughs> cheese, milk. Yes. My dad still doesn't think I have a proper job. <laughs> it's always interesting when you tell them, what do you do for a living? And you're like, well, especially you now. You got billboards everywhere. Yeah. But I must tell you, I feel terrible now because I remember your, when your mom passed. The other day we had Kirsten Lantman on the show. Yes. The, the amazing Dakar. Yes. <gasps> and she said to me on the show, like, she found out her mom had, was diagnosed with cancer. So I said, uh. I said to her, oh, shame, how's she doing? Thinking it was the year that she did Dakar. And she said, no, her mom passed. And how do you recover from that? Because I feel terrible because I do remember now. Mm. But it's like, how do you recover? I'm sure you've had moments on air where you've been like, oh, my bad. Like, sorry, I oh. should have, you know. Oh, you, I just think if people treat death like it's something that only happens to some people, yeah. then there's no VIP section. You know, there's, we have a running joke amongst my friends. There's two things there. There's no VIP section. <laughs> Dating, <laughs> like romance. There's no VIP section there. Yeah. There, you, one day you're in VIP section, the next day... That's it, yeah. <laughs> like, you can't even get in the club, yeah. right? So, and then another thing is death. Death has got no VIP section. Yeah, that's true. It, it, it doesn't matter how wealthy, how good-looking, how smart, how kind you are. Yeah. Death will how hit much you. money you have. Death yeah. will hit you. And so when people feel bad, they're like, oh, your mom this. And then I'm like, no, she passed. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, well, you didn't kill her. So <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, I, just, I just feel pretty <laughs> crappy person. about bringing that because yeah. I was like, no, that was a long time ago. But I'll tell you, the only day I don't like it is on Mother's Day. And, and I prefer to be left alone sure. on Mother's Day. And for so long, I remember an ex of mine that I lived with couldn't understand it. And I was just like, I can't explain it. Yeah. And I don't think I should have to. But I don't want, and, and, and because I am such a hands-on mother with my son, on Mother's Day, my gift is take my son. I don't want to be a mom on Mother's Day. Yeah. I want to not bath. I want to walk around in an empty house. I don't want to run into the nanny, the helper, the guy doing the garden, the delivery guy. I don't want to run into any. I just want to sit and do nothing, and then that's my day. And is it my day where I feel sorry for myself and, you know, I remember my mom or whatever? I don't know what it is. But yeah. on that day, I just, if you're going to bring flowers, great. Give them on Saturday or Monday. <laughs> like, like, I just want to be left alone. That's interesting. I wanna, I'm, maybe it will change and you know certain things happen to you and certain people come into your life and they open another room in your heart that you never knew was there yeah maybe it will change i'm not close to it changing but at the moment i'd say the only time being being motherless <laughs> and not in a tax of him <laughs> man <laughs> yeah, the, your mom you plenty. <laughs> yeah. absolutely the only time not having a mom like just sinks on me is, is, is it's it's on it's on mother's day it's this weekend though. yeah it's it's on sunday yeah. and on day I, th I think like even sometimes my therapist will make me dig deep you know and she'll be like what was your mom like when she was 33 and you're like jeepers like i wasn't i wasn't keeping yeah, score exactly. you know so th then you you kind of have to then you ask the mom's sisters your dad and all those things, but generally I'm not a soppy depressed person, and the thing is I see it in other people where it where the death of somebody crippled them so hard that yeah. they've never come back from it that the, it, it's it's almost like this person passed away yesterday yeah. and that's what they say some people it could be twenty years to them it still hits them that hard. And I'm fortunate enough that m my mom's death didn't do that to me, but I'm not closed off to the fact that somebody else that I lose, sure. could, it could do that to me. Um, and that, that's an interesting thing for me is you constantly, your phone's going, your PA's, this person wants to talk to you, you're producing, you're mm. doing it, you're presenting. Mm. I, is there a time when you get tired of people? Yes. A and I imagine Mother's Day is one of those days yes. that you take for yourself yes. and, and you more than, yeah. you've earned that. Yeah. But, is there a time when you feel like I'm drained from too much people? Yes. There's, uh, and you have to smile all the time. And people yeah. expect you to be this bubbly, uh, outspoken person all the time. Is that a Nele 24-7? <laughs> Do you know, I, the older you get, the more you realize who you really are. Yeah. And it has come to my attention that I may be an introvert. <laughs> After how many years in broadcast? <laughs> right? I'm turning 40 next year, yes. I've been on radio since I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> it, has, it has dawned on me that I may be an introvert, but I know how to switch it on. I, I, you've taken the words out of my mouth because mm. I'm the same. Mm. I, I'm, you can ask Tyler, 
who's our technical producer, yeah. you know, the guys I work with. I'm not actually the guy who's the life of the party who's out there. Yeah, let's get, you know, shot sort of vibe. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a time and place for that. You of see, course. I'm that person. But when. But you turning me, it on then, though? No, I'm that person when it's me and my friends. Okay. Right? But, but that's the circle yeah, of trust, though. But everything else is work. Ex- well, this is it. And that's what people don't realize. Yeah, yeah. Everything else is work. And, uh, uh, and, that, and that's why I, I will seldom say no to an interaction with someone. Um, I, I, the only time I say no is if, if, if their approach is out, then I'm just like, we're not going to do this because I'm not just slave just because I'm known and you're not. Yeah. You know. Just I, to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you got, know, yeah, that people yeah. are abrasive, people are rude. And also people want to try to be funnier than you, right? <laughs> so then they, then they end up saying rude things and you're like, that's actually rude. And now it's awkward because yeah. I, I just called you out and <laughs> yeah. you didn't see it coming, right? <laughs> but... Check, so th- check please. <laughs> yeah. Yes, like check totally. Please. <laughs> but I'm I'll seldom block an interaction because I left the house. Okay. You know, when I leave the house I, I anticipate that. But I mean, if I'm on holiday with my child and all of that, then I'm very like, guys, there's boundaries. Absolutely. You know, let's let's, let's not do this. But so with the you've you've got a I mean the circle you run in, the circles you mm. run in. They're extensive, mm. um, but you have got a circle of trust where it's yeah. this is this is my sanctuary. These yeah. are my people, and I think you have to go back there to ground yourself to go back out. Mm. Is that fair? Mm. To- totally. And luckily for me, if I think a lot of people, what we do wrong is we treat that circle as a vacation, right? Mm. And then so this is your life. This is your life, and then you vacate there. No, I live in that circle. Yeah. That's that's where I am. That's where I operate. Those are the people I speak to every day. Those are the people I see all the time. I mean, uh, th- my one uh, group of friends, they five minutes from my house. Mm. I, our kids are, are speaking every day. That That's my community. That's where I live. Yeah. I come out of there to come here. And that's where... That, that's where my longevity comes from and that's where my sanity is. And that's... that's that's the, I don't have a need for drugs or extensive alcohol abuse, you know, or like spiraling and all of those things because yeah. I'm very grounded in that place. That's where I am. Then I come here to to, to work. I don't... It's, it's not the other way around. I don't live where I work and then in this life that was created and then go there. Yeah. You know, it's, it, 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 I hate that saying, if you need a, a life, not you need a vacation from something. <laughs> what, like, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely not going there. <laughs> but what I am saying is that a lot of my earnest interactions are with people who I have the best interest for and they have the best yeah. interest for me. I think also, which I love about you is, is what you see on air is who you are. It's easier that way. You, you know what I mean? Because you do get people, and we've been around mm-hmm. these people, that you're like, who the hell is that? And then that, like, but you were on, you know what I mean? It's it's chalk and cheese. I, I don't hang out with people like that. No. I I hardly work with people like that. If, if it's in, within my power, whether I work with you or not, I'm not going to work with somebody like that because yeah. I can't trust you. And broadcasting is one long string of trust. Absolutely. Like you have to trust. I like you talking now, and when you're done talking, you trust that I'm going to answer the question, <laughs> right? I, I hope so. <laughs> exactly. Because there's a mutual Cause, respect. Cause, and we're giving know, each trust, other, yeah. right? We're giving each other. Yeah. That, that's it. We, all you're doing. I came here to give my energy to you, and you giving it right back. Yeah. And now with people like that, is if I don't know who you are, how do I know what energy <laughs> you're going to give me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I, I I can't. I if it's in within my power, I certainly don't do it. Speaking of, you are probably one of the most famous people in the country. Mm. Um, you must get a lot of approaches, a lot of people coming up to you, um, and and drawing that energy, wanting a piece of yeah. your time. And I know you're the type of person that that you'll at face value give them. Mm the benefit of the doubt. Mm. But at the end of the day, you're also a very good judge of character and very. quickly suss oh, people quickly. out. My PA, he says, he, da- he, says, he says I'm an ancestor. He calls <laughs> me that. He's like, you're like an ancestor. You can just, get, I can just, or, also people who email to or, or, or DM school uniform, clothes, school trunks, I can always feel when it's a scam. Yeah. Like I'll, I can just see it. And then sometimes I say to Lungan, please send him uh, uh, an e-wallet for 500. He's like, how do you know? I'm like, I just know. And these people come back. My my child graduated. Here are the photos. Here's wow. the, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can just yeah. feel it. I, 
I don't know. I, and I think that's my superpower in broadcasting as well is that over the phone, because that's what we do on radio. We talk, we talk. It's one long phone conversation Absolutely. with someone, right? Absolutely. Over the phone, I can feel you. There might I be can, a song in between. Dude, but it's a phone. It's <laughs> a conversation. many ads like you guys have. <laughs> oh my God. It's like bumper. Come we on. Like us. Well done. Well done. <laughs> but it's, and so I can feel it. I can, I can feel when someone comes towards me and they're going to want more of me than I'm willing to give. Sure. I can always feel it. I'm, I was like, you're heavy on me. You know, you're very, you, you want something, you want to say something. The other day I was at the gym and then I'm by myself in the store now. And as soon as this lady walked in, I knew, I was like, oh God. Here we go. Like, I, I, literally, I said, I said, to yourself, it's that, it's that. I was like, oh fuck, here we go. And then, are these words? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? So yeah. I'm sitting there, tits out, ass out. <laughs> You know, she's there, like everything. I'm in my space. <laughs> <It's yeah>. like, <laughs> so I just, and I'm looking down, I'm sitting mm. on the bench like this, and then I just hear, Anneli, can I ask you something? So I turn up and I said, my babe, look at where we are and what we're doing. No, you can't. <laughs> and she said, oh, yeah, it's like actually right, I understand. Then, but now the room is forever heavy. Oh, uh, exactly. Now it's changed. You so might I, as well end your session. I did. Yeah. I got up I, 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 and I went into the steam room. And I was like, oh, God, if this girl follows me to the steamer, I'm going to have to fight her. <laughs> okay? And it's slippery in here. <laughs> One of us is dislocating something. <laughs> and, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. Especially to kids. Sure. You know, I went to Monster Jam the other day. And I was with my godsons and my son and his friends and all of that. And people were just coming the whole time. And they were like, don't you get tired of it? I was like, especially not with kids. No ways. I was like, I was like definitely not with kids. I was like, also, there's just a... Adults, if you're 30 in the shade, you'll deal with the fact that I said no to a photo on that Absolutely. day. Absolutely. But a child uh, is still form, f forming so much of who they are and what they want to be that I don't, even on my worst day, I don't want to be the one to deter them from wanting to be a broadcaster or a nice person. Yeah. You know, so. I think it's a nice feather in your cap because the fact that you are influencing a new generation. <sighs> just shows that what you're about yeah. that you're not full of BS yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. that kids are coming up to you and it's not because mommy's went hey that's Anneli go get a photo <laughs> it's because I've heard Anneli in the car on the way to school and I want a photo and I like what she says parents say to me what have you done to our kids I said Auntie Anneli I said, I said Auntie Anneli is cool absolutely <laughs> I said because Auntie Anneli is cool all of them and it works in our favor because kids determine what because I remember and when I was driving with my mom in the car Kids determine what you listen to, yeah. you know, because you want them to be part of the conversation. And I like the fact that our radio show does that. We are for adults, but we're a lot of fun for kids as well, yeah. you know. And, and the, the, the adults will get that. We call them the Shrek jokes. It's the innuendos that with the, the adults drive like, oh. Mm. I know what you Yeah, I know what you guys just said. <laughs> and then, you know, the kid is like, oh, we, BTS, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got to ask you, um, you obviously... Uh, the radio and TV is just part of you, mm. but a lot of people are saying radio is dying in South Africa. How mm. do you respond to that? And, you know, like you have the people banging the podcast drum and mm. um, at the end of the day, radio for me remains one of the most incredible mm. mediums out there because of that instant connection, because of the phone call. Mm. How would you sum up the radio landscape in South Africa right now? Because like you said, and, and you can normally tell when a radio station has bumper to bumper ads, all over the place and you're like, can you just stop with a bloody We Buy Cars ad <laughs> and I just want to hear a song or what you guys are going to talk yeah. about next. It normally shows it's a good good space. Yeah. They're making money. Mm. But how would you describe radio in South Africa right now? Firstly, people have been saying radio is dying since we were at Tux. Absolutely. Okay. Um, wait, and even, isn't there a song, Video Kill the Radio Star? <laughs> right? Yet in South Africa, the biggest, the biggest celebrities and the Longest lasting celebrities are on radio. Mm. I don't think radio is dying. I think radio is the first social media the world ever saw. Okay. And um, regardless of what silos people find themselves in, like we go onto a podcast because we right now we're being stylized, right? Mm. We niche. We're speaking about Anelensias, yeah. right? So, so people who like Anelensias will come here. Yeah. But people who want to hear a little bit of everything will always listen to radio, yeah. and that's human nature. And um, uh, somebody said, somebody tweeted me, it's like, oh, I, I just miss when we all used to watch something at the same time. Now, that happens around, you know, rugby, the Springboks are playing, 
or you know the Olympics is on or the World Cup is on or it's the Samas yeah. or it's the Oscars it's the Grammys you know maybe Sona y- y- ma- ma- y- maybe yes, not so much right? anymore but maybe you, you, you know you're right Sona to, ma- to, to, to yeah. make a joke whatever <laughs> right and then people like those moments where we are a community doing the same thing yeah. and this is why radio ca- won't die because at the heart of our souls at, at, at the purest of our essence as South Africans we like community yeah and and this is why, so in New York, that thing works. Each person from their own, don't talk to me. I, I don't know who you are. I'm from Boston. It's fresh I outside. just came into the island. <laughs> I'm from, Bo- you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's got that little, <laughs> it's, it's me, leave me alone, yeah, right? Yeah. So that's why they, the, A, there's an influx of radio stations, hence why also it, it went for a ball of shit. And also because podcasts and playlists and data being so easily obtainable. Yeah. In South Africa, we're all about community. We all so most of the time when I was when I would tune in to your guys' breakfast with Gareth and I'm 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 looking for sports results, I can get the sports results, but I wanna hear what is Sia's gonna say about it. You know? And South African personalities have built a very big and a very strong way of of, of, of people following their opinions yeah. and their thought patterns. So people will know that, oh, Asha and Chris Brown had a fight at a party that Asha threw for Chris Brown. But they want to know, what's Anel and Timbegili going to say about it? Because yeah. th- them two queens are going to gather them. <laughs> They're going to be snappy. About, do you know what it is? Uh, I got you. And that's why radio... In the, dude... If we are still sitting on Ukozi FM having 9 million listeners. Yeah, it's mad. Do you, <laughs> it's mad. And the, and you know what? You can see that as competition, but also you can he- see it as in F1 when you catch the tailwind. So Ukozi is in the front and we're in the tailwind and we're behind them. And they're opening it up because it is just, if 9 million people are listening to radio, it's going to splatter. Absolutely. It's going to splatter. It's going to splatter. And whether languages are a barrier or whatever it is, but it's going to splatter because if we are in a country of 60 million people, and nine million of them are listening to one radio station, and the other ones are scattered amongst the other ones. How is that dying? Oh, that's a very good point. I, I think maybe the references to talent as opposed to the medium, uh-huh. where there is definitely. Uh, now you talk. And just because you're an influencer with mm. however many on Instagram or whatever mm. it is, TikTok. Um, I hate TikTok, by the way. I can't um, even get into it. No. <laughs> um, Maybe it's our ages. So you're turning 30. You know, I recently turned 30. Um, but just because you're an influencer doesn't mean you're a good broadcaster. Mm. Broadcasters are born. Mm-hmm. And they have magic mm. that comes out of their mouths that captivates audience. Which is why you, you're good at TikTok, right? Because at six years old, you were doing dances in the kitchen, right? That's why you're good at TikTok. But I can tell you, at six years old, I was mimicking Oprah. Yeah. You know, at, at six years old, I was mimicking Parkinson's. I was mimicking Larry King. And that's why I'm a broadcaster, because yeah. it was inherently something that that I wanted to do. I didn't know how to put it into words. I didn't know how it was going to end up. But deep inside me, I knew that I, I was that. That's why in grade eight, if there was a speech to be done to the school, they would pick me because I was already on, on a person on a microphone. I'd love to see a video of oh, that. Dude. I'm sure you've got somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure my school has. They'll probably... a, like, um, haven't they got a shrine <laughs> to you? They should have a shrine, surely. And you know what? I'm one of those past people <laughs> who always goes back to the school. <laughs> like, I'm Do just always... Oh, yes, I'm like, <laughs> they're like, into house. I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> like, are we doing this? I'm there. Because I just... Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm cooler than my school. Go I on, give, give your school a shout out. Go Sutherland on, High. Gareth went yeah, there and he hates it. them. And I'm just he's like, oh, but also, Gareth, you hate everything. Uh, <laughs> but to me, like, Mr. Stone is like, oh, Anneli. I'm like, I'm there. Like, what do you need? <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> like, I'm there. I'm going to clear the <laughs> schedule. I'm like, shop food. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you see, even with my radio yeah. show, we do like the school invasion. I like schools. I yeah. just, I, I like children being happy, you know? It, it, it does something for me. It just tells me things are okay if kids are happy, you know? You just want to put good vibes yeah, out there. Yeah, you know? right? So, you know, so that's who I am. So, but back to what you were saying is that I don't mind an influencer wanting to be on radio. I mind when they want to make an influencer DJ Fresh. Okay. Because DJ Fresh is the anchor. And yeah. because he's got so many hours of it, that's why he's so brilliant. Dude, Fresh could do a show with his eyes closed. And he'll still be able to carry the conversation on, right? Yeah. But that's because what we don't realize about broadcasting is you have to give the power away. Yeah. You know, 
uh, when people say, oh, it's Anele in the club. I'm like, yeah, but that and the club is very important. Because yeah. I, I literally give the power to them every day. So I give the story and then they are an orchestra. They make magic. You draw. Do you know what? Then, then, it's, then it's there. Then I, I can sit in somebody's eyes. Oh, this one's got something funny to say. Then I'll, I'll point it to you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's only when they pull up the mic. Like, <laughs> the, 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 okay. You know it because yeah, you've yeah. been a, you're like a super contributor. That's what I'm saying. You exactly. know, like you just, when you're just like... Mm, I got and like, something. Mm, 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 <laughs> and, and then at that point in time, Anele... It doesn't matter, my love. Nothing you have to say will ever be as interesting as a Cindy leaning in going... <laughs> exactly. You know? And it's magic. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And now what happens is because you're a star on TikTok, you're a star on Instagram, you're a star on Twitter, wherever it is that you came from, which is okay. Yeah. You, you definitely belong here because the medium's... But it doesn't mean you have the right to, to be an anchor. It, and also... The only time you're going to have a right to be an anchor is when you understand that yeah. you don't have to be talking all the time. Yeah. You don't have to be talking all the time. I can sit in a link and say one thing and everybody else continues. And they're on each other, on each other, on each other. And then I point to my desk controller when I it. say, I, and I literally say, nothing I could add is going to be But also you've got to a point now where you understand where to draw the line, where the link ends. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think... Yes, you can be. It's even, I, I remember Celeste Nduli, when she was acting on Isabaya, she had this issue with, like, oh, when Instagram came out and then all the hot girls were on Instagram and then directors were casting them for their shows because obviously hot girls on TV means ratings. And I said to her, no, you're looking at it wrong. There's de there's definitely room for them. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah. A, they must just know their lines. They must get acting lessons. It's fine because not everyone went to Yale or Juilliard or New York University exactly. or Vitz drama or Stellenbosch drama, right? Some people just have a natural talent and they're not going to be educated for it, but they're going to be on there, yep. right? That's fine. But you must know that it is very seldom that that person is going to be character A. They can be character three or four or nine. They can, they're vehicles. We're going to use them to get the story along. Yeah. They definitely belong there. Pretty face, babe, please. Small waist, big old ass, big old hair, big old <laughs> lashes, girl, bye. Come on. I, I'm not hating. Come on. Yeah. But you, you're going to have to earn being character A. You're going to yeah. have to earn being Viola Davis. Absolutely. You're going to have to earn being Meryl Streep. Yeah. Because these people are acting their socks earn their off. stripes natural talent willing to learn all those boxes ticked so my next question to you as someone who's producing i mean the list of shows tyler was showing me i was like are you kidding <laughs> like i need to watch more tv <laughs> but um no i'm not on the mass singer um what are you looking for in talent what are you looking for as a producer you know the ingredients the moving parts there's the trust factor mm. there's also the magic factor there's also the risk factor. Mm. I, 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 I like that you said the risk factor. Mm. I'm very risky when it comes to me casting the shows that I've now cast. For instance, um, on this panel for the Masked Singer, the detective panel, the, the, one, the girl is an unknown. She's, she's Sitello. She's the mayor of social media. That's what she's called because she's got catchphrases. You know, she's, she, she's effervescent. She's magnetic. But she's a hard worker. Yeah. Every time I go to a change room, she's researching something. She's like, she's got a pen and paper. She's asking questions. She she's a she's a bombshell. Yeah. I mean, she's like literally the prototype for what people go to plastic surgeons with. You know, <laughs> at the moment they're like, I want her ass, I want her waist, I want her this teeth. This picture. <laughs> you know, I want to look like this. <laughs> Do you understand me? So she's a belter. Yeah. yeah. And and she doesn't rest on that, okay. right? And and I I just. I liked her because also she was what wasn't expected, you know. I wanted somebody engaging who knows the industry well, who knows celebrities well. But also, because here's the th the success in what we do mm. is knowing that, yes, it's Anele, but if somebody comes in here, it's all about them. Yes. Right? So you praise them, you, you, you research them, you know them well. So you earlier what I said is you must know when to give away the power because the, 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 that's, the, that's exactly, a powerful person knows exactly when they don't need to be powerful. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. Yeah. You, you only go to a powerful person when you need now the power. <laughs> if, you, if you every day you're powerful, 
Escom. <laughs> See what happened there. I, you know, are you sure? There's a breakdown. There's a breakdown. My dupe station is gonna go down, <laughs> bro. You need to play it. That some days you are the runner, some days you're the king. Sometimes you're the pauper, sometimes you're the queen. You know. Yeah. Disciplinarian. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Good guy, fine, bad guy. Absolutely. Sometimes you're writing the scripts. Yeah. Sometimes you're printing the scripts. It, you have to be everything. And when I can when I look at talent, I want somebody who I know that in 20 years they, they they're gonna be that. Yeah. They, they they're gonna learn to be that. That you. You, you, the, there are many ways to be who you are in in in, a, in in the broadcasting field, and also just somebody that the the viewers are going to relate to. She's a mother of three, you know. She's not married, um, we, which is a, a huge percentage of the South African yeah. culture, right? Uh, she's she's very flawed. Um, she's she, she's she's hard when she's she wants. She's real. She's vulnerable when yeah, when yeah. is needed. And you know, on a panel with her and Skumba and Somizi and Jay something, I just liked it that it was a. I remember Gracie. Remember Gracie, our, our <laughs> Gracie, our our, our Australian oh, radio wow. consultant yes. who would come every three months oh, wow. to tell us we shit and then leave. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He'd be like a, c- a cacophony. I remember <laughs> the first time I heard that word was from him. You know, she, it, that that panel is just a cacophony of entertainment and mayhem and mess. But and that's what you need in a show like that. Exactly. Because you actually don't quite know what's going to come out. You don't. And that's the beauty. It's the wildest show in the world. And often those uh, combinations, or they lead to the most brilliant TV. Dude, th- they miss each other. I mean, we rapped. They, they, they're like, oh, let's go. They miss each other just because of the... So it's a proper squad now. Yes, and the vibe that we created on set. And Frank Kim and myself and Paul, who us three who own Rose and Oaks, were very clear when we, we started the production company five years ago. I was like, guys, me... I just want people to have fun when they're at work. I don't want anyone going home to be stank eyed to their families because they had a bad day at yeah, work. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I don't stank care if it cuts our, our our profits, but we feed them very well. Yeah. And we treat them even better. Yeah. You know? And that's why you're so successful. And I just for me, energy, I, I just I hate it when people are unhappy at work. It just doesn't make sense to me. So tell me now, there's clearly the next chapter of your life is in the current chapter with the producing mm. of TV. Mm. I, I still foresee a very long radio career, but there will come a time when an Eddie has to ha- hang yeah. up the headphones. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's inevitable. An, it's an, it happens. You can't die on the job. But Unless you earn crew. Cheap is, <laughs> yeah. Shame, poor guy. Rest now, in peace. All the kids now, you guys must Google Ian crew. Yeah. What a go. legend. What yeah. a legend. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, is this producing TV something where you foresee that sort of next chapter because mm. I don't see you as a station manager of a radio station somehow yeah maybe an owner maybe a radio. CEO yeah, yeah not a station manager not a station manager but I I know we're jumping the gun here no we no, are, no, but no no it's I'm obviously something that's in your thoughts it is but because I'm very good at nurturing talent like spotting it mm. and then nurturing it and seeing what you're good at and then sending you out there I think a lot of of radio talent would benefit from me as sure. a, as a station manager. So whatever role or position I have within that broadcasting uh, like map, it it would have to allow me to be to to be able to say, "Hey, try this." Yeah. Hey. That flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, got it you. Would, it would, because if you look at the TV I've done, it's all talent. It says got talent. Yeah. The voice in the South Africa. It's it's just me finding talent and the, the, and the list is yeah and nurturing year. it like with Miss Essay and and that's why because I don't I don't know how to to put one foot in I put I, I if, if there's water no, I'm you like, diving yeah head exactly yeah, right yeah, I got you I got you so with Miss Essay as well that's why I had to say to them guys I need a break because I don't know how to just crown them and leave them like. I crown them and then I'm like this on them. Then I sit on them. I'm like, Zosie, what's going on? Yeah, what's next? What's next? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Who Don't talk to that person. But you're giving back. <laughs> in, in, so just through your personality, you're giving back y- you know, to so the, the industry. I, I'm like, should To South Africa. Uh, go home now. Yeah. In South Africa, I shouldn't be at a party after this. You know, it's like, so I just, and to them as well, to, to what we're saying, like the older sister, it, that's exactly, when I go into a show, a show, I become that. I don't know how not to be that. Yeah. So the only way to save myself from being that is to be far away from it. So I know I'm saying that if you if I had to be in that map, I'd have to be somewhere else. Sooner or later, I'd be that person who's there by the studio, like. Yeah. 
Hi guys. Nice show, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Seventeen was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, <laughs> I sub- yeah, but yeah, that's why you. you can't miss steps because yeah. if I don't miss the step of station manager, maybe it won't be as important to maybe me. Maybe that is the next step. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, it's not around the corner. Nah. No, I think you're having too much fun. And and you know, with the producing thing, even that's a stepping stone for something else. Yeah. I I I wanna I wanna own studios. Yeah. I, yeah. I want. To have studios where we shoot movies, we shoot TV series, we shoot TV shows. We can like, shoot this show if you do want. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what like I, mean? I, 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 I want it to be like. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. It's all good. Don't worry. We're not going anywhere just yet. <laughs> like Universal, where yeah, it's everything. Absolutely. You know. So. Tell me. Uh, I think you surprised a lot of people when your name popped up for Super Saturday, um, and that's meant with all respect. Mm. I just think no one expected you, even though I know you're a sports fan. Yeah. To sort of go that way. In, in that way. Yes. If, you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly what you're saying. As a guest, maybe, like initially, yeah. but the fact that you've come on there and you've owned the space, man, it's been brilliant to watch. Can I tell you, Super Saturday is by far the hardest I've worked in the last five years. Really? You must ask Neil and Ryan and all of them. Um, they, But my work ethic is spoken no, about a lot. unquestioned. I'm there at six in the morning when we go live at nine and not to do hair and makeup, but because I understand that I'm not as skilled as they are you know i'm i'm, I'm sponging i'm learning I, i'm doing and the i always find something every year i try or every it's just quite regularly way i go back to that thing where i did with you guys at tax where i'm learning from other people sure i'm i always make sure that sooner or later once a year i'm in a place where i'm not the best one there yeah and neil's one of the best in the biz <laughs> absolutely neil you can wake him up now and two minutes later, Neil is presenting a perfect link. Live. No, I have lots of respect for Neil Andrews. Knowledge. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Also and earned his strikes. Exactly. You know, so I think people forget. Neil didn't just rock up and start. Okay, he is a talented broadcaster, but he's earned his He's place. earned his stripes and, and he's just an encyclopedia of sport, yeah. right? And for me, because I, I know that I'm not that. I know sports and yeah. I like sports, but... When you're doing a show like Super Saturday and you're working at such an institution like Super Sport, you have to respect it. So that's why I, like Marcel, would be like, I've never seen anyone who is as heavily researched as Anel. I will research and I will, if they say, oh, we're going to speak about, you know, uh, Barcelona versus Real Madrid, I will listen to every podcast that came out in the last week around the world. When do you get time, Anel? And when do you sleep? Because that's oh, another question. I love sleep. No, we all do, but it's something. As a breakfast show host, you don't have the luxury of. You've got to. You've got to be selfish with your sleep. Oh, you really have to it. be. Oh, I find. You find. <laughs> oh no. Are I'm, you a midday napper? I'm in every every <laughs> time. Listen, says me. I will sleep. <laughs> so, are you the type that if you had a sleep pod at a business that you owned a studio, that's be me. You twenty minutes here and there. Yeah. Okay. I take my. Joe, even if so, like radio ends, I leave work at by eleven. We pre- prep the show. Let's say I'm emceeing something at five, but we're doing rehearsals at two. Ha, ah, guys, I, you just gave me two hours. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> and are you? Are you? Do you fall asleep easily? Yeah. Very and are easy. you deep sleep or? But. Okay. All of it, all of it is correct. I'm deep sleep. I'm light sleep. I'm I, okay, I I'm you. short sleep. I'm. Lo- it's just sleep. If you say if you say <laughs> we're sleeping for thirty minutes, I'm sleeping for thirty minutes. I got it. If you say we're sleeping for ten hours, I'm sleeping for ten hours. <laughs> you know, like international flights. The last time I I watched those movies on a flight was very long ago. I will sleep all sixteen hours to LA every single minute. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've got to ask you this. I mean, the the rock star that you are, and I mean. <laughs> Trevor Noah, mm-hmm. like you guys, go, I know you go way back mm. before he was who he is today, mm. and he's always been an incredibly talented comedian and just a great human being. But you guys have like become tight, man. Like Costa Rica, right? Yes, yes. And there was like we almost it, died. I was about to say I heard about that, and I'm going, oh my god! Imagine Trevor and Anele <laughs> go down in Costa Rica. Uh, that's chaos. Oh, dude, <laughs> what a surreal experience. And I actually only clicked recently that because afterwards I was laughing so much and it clicks now that it was a trauma response. Yeah. 
I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, yeah, so, was... so just take us there. Yeah. What, what happened for those who don't know? So just... we 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 were in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, sounds Rica so, like because amazing. Obviously, Trevor's been everywhere in the world. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I want to take you guys here. Oh, let's go Peru. Oh, let's go Japan. Oh, let's go here. Oh, okay. So now it's Costa Rica, <laughs> stunning house. Uh, and then what I love about our holidays is that we're not there just to eat and drink. It's not a boozing holiday. It's yeah. We're playing picket, we're cycling, we're swimming, we're running, we're hiking. We're just always looking for activities Got to you. do. So uh, half of the day is that, then the other day we can laze about on the beach and whatever. So I'm not even supposed to go white water river rafting, whatever the hell it's called. I'm, gonna sh- I'm sure you've got a contract with your employers <laughs> going, <laughs> no, 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 three hours, no, no. Dude, and also because I hadn't traveled with a nanny and I was with my child. And yes, there was stuff at the house, but I was just like, okay, I like it, really can look after himself. Yeah. But I was like, I'm. Then Kaya couldn't go to, to river rafting. So Trevor's like, hey, Anisa, you up? I'm like, okay, let's go. So we go, my shorts, and hey, up, let's go. Get there, and they were like, okay, there's three rafts, four, three, three. You guys, it's myself, Caesar, and Trevor. They're like, you guys will be too. Because we strong swimmers, so they're like, we'll give you guys the least qualified um, river guide, whatever. But you guys are strong. You guys are all strong swimmers, sure. all of that. So let's go. But was no, it raging the water? It, it, it wasn't and it wasn't. Okay, so it yeah. was calm so and it yeah, wasn't and calm. Then there's a but where, where, where the, what did they call it? The Terminator. When the Terminator came. Immediately, I'm like, red flag. Yes. Oh, right. But we were very cocky. I was going to say, oh, we're South Africans. Yeah, we we were, can handle load shedding. Oh, we can handle potholes. We were like, we would, we'd go through like a, a little, <laughs> and then and then we'd high-five each other with our paddles. Ah, <laughs> we're like, ah, ah, Pura Vida, my friends. Pura Vida. <laughs> we're like, Trevor's like, we're the A-team. Look how far ahead we are. Look where they are. <laughs> can imagine. Oh, look, they capsized. These losers. <laughs> like, like, Jana, we were very cocky. We were very cocky. And the Terminator, you're like, bring it on. And now we're sitting there, and then we're sitting, and then the, the, the guys are standing up, and they're looking at this Terminator. I'm like, guys, we have places to be, okay? Like, we are on a... We're cycling we, do, do, we are pura vidaring here. The beers are getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yay. <laughs> when that thing went down. And because they were just like, we're going down, you lean back, you keep on paddling. Yeah. That's, and that's what it worked all the entire one. Sure. So this one, it's a 10 meter, no, no, six feet, six foot drop. I don't know what that is in meters. Six foot. Six foot's about two, well, no, 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 1.8 meters. Yeah, they're like, it's six feet. Because I remember they're like, the actual drop is six feet, right? So <laughs> so I'm like, what do you mean six feet? So Silver turns like, six feet, like six feet underground. <laughs> that's how, that's what's wow. going to happen. So already now I'm like, whew, okay. Go down and then literally there's a photo where... All our faces, now we. this is the raft, we're in it, and this is the water. And, and all our faces are just like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator's real. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. And I remember getting pulled under the water, and I'm like, okay, cool. Because I thought I was the only one that fell out the boat. Oh, I see, yeah. So, and, and w- w- what we've been taught is if somebody falls out, you guys reach out, you pull them back yeah. in, and you carry on. So in my mind, I'm like, no, Caesar and Trevor are going to get me. I'm, I'm waiting for a hand. I'm just, and this is the thing. Now I'm waiting. <laughs> and then I'm waiting. Oh, wow. And then I'm waiting. Are you being? Yeah. Th- I'm just like being oh and, my God. And underwater. I've, I'm, I'm holding my breath, which is fine. I'm a swimmer. So that's easy. Yeah, so you're not panicking. You're like, I've got. I wasn't yeah, panicking yeah. at all. In fact, what was annoying me was I had these dreads and they kept on coming onto my face. I'm like, oh. I'm like this holiday here is annoying me. Holiday, that's that's what. And the thing I was wearing was getting wet and also sticking to uh, my face. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was just like a case of oh. Remove. But you were calm in the yeah, situation. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, why? Are like these Trevor's hands getting? coming yeah, any second and now. I'm like, why are these people getting me? Like Trevor's a strong swimmer. <laughs> Caesar's not. Why, 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 why. Hey, I open my eyes in the water. Trevor's in the water. I'm like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> this is not good. That's when I start panicking. <laughs> wow. And then like, and, and then I, I'm just hearing muffled panic messaging in Spanish. And I'm like, oh wait, these motherfuckers don't know their own river. Like, what's going on? Like, I don't speak Spanish. I don't and then, I, I, then I, I then like come up Yeah. and Caesar says, I've never seen your eyes like that. Like, cause he was already up now. Yeah. And then they're giving me a rope and I'm reaching for this rope and then Trevor's here and he's like, 
<laughs> Stop twirling. <laughs> so then I just grab him and now I'm being stretched like this because I'm holding the rope that's going to pull us in and I'm holding this one that's spinning like it's in a nutri bullet. And then like I'm holding <laughs> like I'm holding like this, holding like this. And then they, then they pull us in, okay? Now we, they're on land, and then they're like, taking photos. Those are the photos where we're like, okay. <laughs> At least, you know, muscle memory, red carpet, hey. <laughs> then they take those photos, they're like, okay, we have to get back in and go to the rest of the river. Which was fine, but I, I remember we were quite quiet now. Because before we, we hit this thing, Trevor was like, I think I'm going to get my team to like find places around the world where we can river raft and we can just... We can just spend a year river raft because we're so good at this now. <laughs> like after, this, after, after that, I'm like, hey, Trev, <clears throat> so next year, <laughs> are we going to be like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just such a nice story to carry on telling because yeah. then we got onto land and then the other g- boats wanted to tell us, they're like, guys, what happened? So Colisa's our friend was in another one and he's like, guys, when that thing went down, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to explain to the president of South Africa <laughs> that I lost Trevor, Caesar, and Anne. I was about to say. <laughs> in one go, <laughs> you know? And then the stories have been fun and because Trevor's like very spiritual and like he's the very within person. Yeah. But you remind him that you saved his life. No, he says to me, he says, he's like, yo, guys, this because in the in the friendship circle I'm the only mother. He's like, this is why we need a mom in this friendship circle. Because Anela's group, but I thought that is the <laughs> mother's group. Like she gripped me like it was unlike it. It's like I knew she was not letting go. Like I was busy spinning and just the way she wow. <laughs> held me. And he's right. I just I, I don't know. I was just calm. I just went. And like I almost scolded him with my hands, like, yeah. calm down. You know, like when your mom does this to you, yeah, like, yeah, no, in a shopping line or whatever. Power. I, I was just like, hey, man, man, stop it. And then, like, and then, so he's like, yo, guys, that grip. <laughs> but it was fun. And you know what? The next day we were, we were what's that thing, zip lining over crocodiles. And I suppose we like the, the, the riding the edge of the yeah, yeah, because. Exactly. And also, what, what stories would you tell when you come to see us as podcast? Uh, listen, <laughs> that was probably one of the best stories I've ever heard. Sorry, Gareth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we've got a few more minutes. Um, really? That I know, but that's what I said. It's fun, right? Yeah. Um, you're welcome to come on any other time. Open invite. Just rock up. Mm. Um, on a serious note, mm. as someone who's such a, ba- uh, a beacon of hope, of inspiration, you must have a responsibility to to keep everyone in good spirits, right? Mm, mm. How do you do so in the current South African climate? Because there's not, and, and that's where radio plays such an important part mm. is to make light because South Africans, we're a resilient bunch, but we also have a sense of humor yeah. at the same time. Yeah. But currently we're, we're at our lowest point. How do you, you know, make people believe um, or I, cheer them up, I suppose, somehow? I suppose I can't do anything for anyone that I can't do for myself. Okay. So a lot of the time, I don't if I'm not feeling, uh, f- feeling you know, to, to be that. But luckily, I, I know exactly how to put myself in a good mood. I know exactly how to make myself happy. I know exactly what I need, you know, to, to be centered, to be kind, yeah. you know, all of those things. And, and once I do it with myself, the, the systems are built. I got you. You know, the systems are built. Then it's so, it's so easy for them to... Just rubs off on to, people. To rub off yeah, on the next person, okay. the next I person, the you. next person. And what, what, I, what I found with COVID is, like, I've got a team. You know, I've got two nannies. Uh, I've got the guy who does my, my garden. I've got Lungani, who's my PA. I've got my makeup artist. Uh, so I, I looked at my in, in, in immediate team, and I was like, okay, so... All I'm gonna make sure it happens. These guys get their salaries, yeah. regardless of what's going on, you know, because ultimately, if I'm if I make sure that these six or seven people get their salaries, it means that their families are looked after. Yeah. So we we, we, we I'm not sending th- this, whatever net and how far it goes because of 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 me. I'm not sending it into disarray. So what what I I know about the country and what's going wrong is that if you just you yourself can make sure that you're keeping five people employed and they are breadwinners and they keep it, they keep it going to the next one and the next one, the next one. And like you, and you ask yourself, for instance, my au pair just moved a little further away from home and now she has to drive further. So it can't cost her to come teach my child. So do I have to give her a raise? No, I don't. Yeah. But in order to keep the country okay, 
I have to give him a raise. Because if she doesn't get paid, then it affects... It's a knock-on effect. Exactly. Ten other people. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So th- that's how I'm, I'm, I'm running things. Is, is Frankie happy? Is Timbikile happy? Is Cindy happy? Is Nebo happy? Who's my call screener? Is Ryan happy? Are they all paid well? Yeah. And that, that was a very big part of the sabbatical and the contract and me is that I just got to a place where I was like, if my team's not taken care of any longer, I can't be part of this because yeah. it's heavy on me because I can feel the energy. You know, I can feel that Cindy wants to spend time with her children. Yes. I can feel, you know, I can, uh, that's me. I'm a yeah. feeler. So p- part of the, I, didn't, I was like, Jonathan will tell you, I didn't sign my contract until like, my team was taken I'll, care of. But that, that's what I, <laughs> I was going to ask you because that was, uh, you. that was groundbreaking. Yeah, because I was just like, guys, it's Anneli in the club. I get it, but it, it's a team. It's such an, I just want people to be content because if I can, if, if my job is to make you content, your yeah. job is to be happy. Exactly. Right? You can make yourself happy. And then but you, you perform. can't be happy if you're not content. Exactly. So my base, my basic salary is contentment for you. Sure. That's what I'm going to get right. And then you, out of your performance and clients loving you and listeners liking you, that then can bring you happiness within your job. Yeah. Uh, within the, 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 in life, there's pillars. One of them is job. One of them is family. One of them is personal life. You know what I'm saying? I've got you. One of the pillars that I can look after is your job. Right? Sure. And, and and that's and, and, and that's exactly it. So even at Prime Media, there's six floors. My job is to make sure that on the fourth floor, people are laughing because I work on the fourth floor. That's right. I can't, I, first floor, second, I, I'll visit every now and yeah. then when I need a visa letter, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but generally, the khias yeah. and the energy Emanates and the love that. is fourth floor. Yeah. And and, and that's it. So I, I, I think... As as a as as a country, don't want to solve that problem. Don't worry about that problem. Look at the ones here, your immediate people, yeah. because then they have immediate people, and those people have immediate people. Those people, have immediate people. and then ultimately, you're there. Can you just tell that to people at uh, the traffic lights too, please? Because it uh, it's not a it's a no it, anyway. I'm just saying they don't know H when it, H. it's <laughs> like. Come on, <laughs> guys, like, stop <laughs> this way. Then this anyway. No one knows how to drive. But um, we have a little surprise for you. Um, Yay. Tyler, if you don't mind, we've got a special day coming up. Do you mind if we uh, just... Uh, Which one? Mother's Day or my birthday? No, we, I know how you feel about Mother's <laughs> Day. So this is birthday. Yay! Uh, let's have a look there. This is some wonderful packaging we got, but we've got balloons and everything. So you have a choice. This. Uh, <clears throat> that one. This one? Wait, cause, is, wait, is that... Thank you. Are we going to sing? Uh, we can you. do if you want to sing. We can sing. <laughs> okay, we're, it's, it's lo- we're losing balloons here at the moment. Um, this one, please also open. I, I just want to give you, a, you know, we is Queen Bee. We got to give her a choice. Wait, is here, it yeah. carrot cake? Who's chocolate? Oh my god! It's not cheesecake. Oh do you god. approve? I, do, I definitely do approve. Well, you happy twenty ninth birthday for the nineteenth. Thirty nine. You know that I, I'm not a person who hides my age. I know, but some people are. That's but weird. I know. And? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. What are you supposed to do when people sing to you? <laughs> Just eat the cake. You know that we've never no, discussed it. Yeah. No, a peep. Hurrah. It's just completed. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> and... Happy birthday, birthday to you, Queen Bee. Well done. Yay. Anele, thanks for coming on the show. You are a rock star. Um, I'm a massive fan. Keep up the amazing work. Keep up chasing, changing lives. And um, yeah, take it easy and uh, keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Sias. Did, did you tell people that I said you've got the best looking nose I've ever seen on anyone? I have not, and that's the first here yeah, exclusive to the show. Thank no, you very but, much. But you remember I used to tell you this? Yeah, you did. I remember we used to get drunk <laughs> on campus, and I just touched his nose. It's all coming out now. And then Nashi would be all like, out what's, now. That, what's that deal's going on your nose? And I was like, you, your man has got the best nose I've ever seen. <laughs> like, how's your brother? Uh, he's in France. Can you believe it? He, Doing didn't, very he well. didn't get the nose. No, he didn't get the mm-hmm. nose, but he got the beard. He got the facial hair. Yeah, nose. exactly. I, I, I always knew you. I was your favorite. Thanks, Nelly.